Cristo. View the following spoilers with discretion, my friends. Sometimes you have to fight battles, and it's how you fight those battles is what matters. And I think knowing that you don't have to go through it alone is important, and you can have people around you. And I think that's what Kratos and Atreus and everyone in this game kind of learns. My name is Gosur. I am the AI lead and the narrative tech design co-lead on God of War Ragnarok. My name is Connor Radding Bland. I'm a narrative animator here at SMS. I'm Andrew Loyola, or uh, Aloy, as some of my coworkers know me as, uh, and I'm a QA lead on God of War Ragnarok. I'm Rajul Ramchandani. Uh, I'm a tech designer here at Santa Monica Studios. As a narrative animator, usually my primary job is to work on the cinematics for the game. My primary responsibility is to manage the test coverage that goes into a game of its size. I'm a technical designer, and what that entails is that we end up working on set pieces, little character moments around the level, gameplay mechanics. It almost feels like we are building a puzzle together, but we are also building all the pieces from scratch. And as a lead, one of my biggest role is, is making sure we deliver what we promised to deliver at the end. Ready. In the previous game, there was almost no family to start with. There was Kratos, who was afraid to show his true self uh, because of her past trauma to his son. And we watched them kind of build that relationship as the game goes on. And we kind of got to a point where they were father and son at the end. In this game, we've explored a lot about Atreus figuring out who he is, uh, but you know, he can't really do that without the people around him. It starts with just Kratos and Atreus, and as they build their relationship, as they are becoming this duo of who's always there for each other, they also bring in other people. They bring in Mimir, they bring in Brock and Sindri, and it is, and it's not just them. Like, as you go through the game, you see the Freyr Five, you see the Odin and his family. Kratos tries to protect Atreus as best as he can through training, through being a literal shield for him. But Atreus wants to get out there and figure out what he needs to do on his own. And throughout the entire game, they're just butting heads on, I need to do this myself, or no, we, this is not our business. We need to protect ourselves. Stop thinking like a father for a moment and start thinking like a general. No! Odin's giving relationship probably is what attracted Atreus to work with him in the first place, despite knowing that Odin is the cause of many of the troubles of all of his other friends. Feel free to come and go. Take what you need, poke around as you please. You're not my prisoner. And more importantly, I am not your father. Odin is more hands off. Odin kind of sends him on missions and he lets Atreus go out and about. I just wish Atreus were not so restless. That separation and Atreus being away for a while kind of also allows Kratos to learn that sometimes being overly protective is not always good. You need to give some space to your kids so that they can figure out who they are. And I think that's a very good change for Atreus in the beginning because he feels like this is someone, you know, letting me do my own thing. But we kind of figure out later on that Odin is only warm up until a point when your usefulness has run out. And that's when we see his true colors and Atreus kind of realizes that everything that Odin has given him, while maybe useful, is a facade. Thor was really great. I learned a lot from him. You learned something from him? Really now? <laughs> okay. What did you teach the kid? <laughs> Nothing. What could I possibly teach him? Exactly. Found family as a theme started back in the first God of War in the Norse series. Mimir, towards the end of the last game, mentions that we couldn't really do it without help from Brock and Sindri and you, Atreus, and you, Kratos. The concept of found family means a lot to me because 
all my family and my friends that I grew up with are back in Turkey. It was just me and my husband for a very long time. I think a lot of what this game talks to is about accepting each other and realizing that the people around you can be your family. We've gone through that. We've built our families through my coworkers in the studio who are my friends now. And I think that is what's happening in this game too. Whether it's Kratos, Mimir, and Atres and Agaboda, or Brock and Sindri being your weird uncles, it's about accepting each other for who we are and realizing that those characters are all that they've got. Well, come on then, let's get him something that fits at least. Kratos, he calls Mimir by his name instead of calling him Head. That is a huge step up. He guides Kratos and Atreus pretty faithfully throughout the entire game, trying to see past their faults and challenging them whenever they have pretty poorly formed ideas. Kratos welcomes a lot of the help that Sindri and Brock offer uh, without too much challenge. There's that found family and the, the growth of trust that we see throughout the entire game a lot more than we did on the first God of War in the Norse series. Well, don't go getting too cheery about it. But with how Atreus's relationship is with Kratos in the beginning of the game and kind of how it develops in the first half, you start to notice that Atreus and Sindri become close. As Atreus kind of separates from his father, Sindri almost sort of becomes this kind of this other different father figure that's giving him advice and helping him out in a way that maybe Kratos would not do. As Atreus and Sindri form a strong bond, Kratos and Brock actually get to build a bond together. I find that pairing interesting because I think you get to learn a lot about Brock. Sindri and Brock, they're separated for pretty much most of the game and then coming into God of War Ragnarok, they're together and they sort of let go of their past quarrels and you know you really get to see that they've built a strong relationship. You mean we combine it with... That's right! And then when he... It'll go... Damn you, that's brilliant. Very well. The realm between realms is where Brock and Sindri live. Generally a safe haven for Kratos and Atreus. Player agency is something that we really care about in the realm between realms, whether it's getting a side quest from Ratatasker or just accounting for the various player behaviors. You know, when you walk close to a companion that's hanging around in the house, whether it's the shop or Brock or Tyr just hanging around waiting for his food or Atreus sitting in his room. We want you to feel like you've stumbled upon specific character moments. This place is great, Sindri. You built it all yourself. You know it. Showing their personality as much as possible in these spaces to the player. So the animation team kind of have to make sure that what they do is very much in character breaking everything down and thinking in very much detail and making sure we have the tech to do so. Being locked up for so long, you forget how much joy lives in the little things. Another relationship that I think is interesting is the relationship between Kratos and Freya. Last game, you see them build this relationship and you even see Atreus look up to her as almost a mom. Now, at the beginning of this game, you have a very angry Freya chasing you. <laughs> But through the course of the game, you kind of see them work through that and mend broken relationships and kind of come back stronger. I do not regret saving your life, and never will. But the choice between life and death should have been yours to make. I should not have robbed you of that choice. So you got Freya, and then you have her brother, Freyr. He sold my sister to that prick. We broke it a piece. Oh. Did you now? Where is it? The key element between those two is when Freya left to be with Odin, they separated. Freya, as we know from the previous game, went to go marry Odin to as a potential solve to the Aesir Vanir War. And Freyr was left to pick up the pieces. On one hand, Freyr was dealt a bad hand. He wasn't a natural leader like Freya was, and kind of blamed her for a lot of the hard times that he fell upon. Both of them thought they were trying to do the right thing, and the other thought that it wasn't the right thing to do. In this game, you kind of find out that Freya felt abandoned by Freyr, and you get to see those two come together and be a strong family again. 
abandon you. Oh, Freya. I mourned you. Oh, I missed you so much. Like how Kratos and Atreus rely on their found family throughout the entire game, the people and development team at Santa Monica Studio were all there to support each other and really make the best game that we can make. I've had to move across the world essentially to a different country and uh, you end up being away from family a lot of the times and your friends become your family. I think that's something I've hopefully have helped relate in the game as well. You know, I've really grown to love the narrative animation team here. It feels exciting and that we're all kind of coming together to create this awesome game. With all the relationships in the game, I think the biggest lesson is everybody has room to grow and room to write their own destiny. Life takes you through different paths and sometimes you go through struggles and how you go through them is important. And I think the family that you built around yourself it would be there to fight those battles with you. Let's go!